Good evening, Vanessa. Hi, it's Costa. It's you. Hi, how are you? All right, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for coming tonight. Good evening, Aaron. How's everybody doing this evening? Seems like fall is here finally. Just in time for the first day of fall tomorrow. I'm ready for some cooler weather. Not winter, but. <laughs> Hopefully we'll actually get a nice fall too. Ones that actually kind of temperatures don't just completely drop out so fast. We'll wait a minute here to see if anybody else joins us. I do apologize for the different start time tonight. Good evening, Sarah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good. Welcome to uh, our unofficial official first day of fall. Yes. Beautiful out today. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So hope everyone's doing well. Well, thank you again for coming tonight. Um, Especially this change in time tonight, I apologize. Uh, I appreciate everyone coming. Um, I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest, I played a little hooky today just from school and I went to the Ryder Cup today up in Kohler. So uh, I kind of had to take, it was kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity. So to be able to go and see the Ryder Cup uh, was really a great experience today. So uh, I got my USA hat on that I got there today. So that's why we're a little bit late this evening. Uh, I just got home a little bit ago. So thank you very much for uh, coming tonight. Um, so I guess as always, um, I kind of wanted just to see, uh, check in with everybody to see where you're at. Like, uh, how are you doing? Um, what do you need? What's going on? What questions do you have? Uh, there's a lot of things, kind of things kind of going on, kind of up and coming. So just wanted to see where you guys are at and what's going on. Well, 
Uh, no questions on my end. Okay. Either that's really good because I've given you all the information you need or you're not quite sure what questions to ask or I'm just doing a great job as far as making sure that you know everything up front. So it's got to be one of those things. I'm not quite sure which one, but um, so uh, we'll just kind of run through my little list of things that I sent out to you guys last week um, of stuff to talk about. So um, we're still looking or we need two, uh, the two two liter pop bottles and it's now coming up rather quickly uh tuesday september 21st is today we need them by next week thursday uh september 30th um i've sent out like i i got on to the uh, verona family's facebook page i'm trying to get as many pop bottles as i can um i don't know what came in today but we were kind of behind in our pop bottle collection um we are going to be using them for our ecology unit where we're going to be doing and conducting our first experiment um, from the stuff that we've been learning right now in our new unit, or the unit that we're in, our nature science unit, where the kids are going to be conducting an experiment where they're going to need a control group and an experimental group, which is why we need the pop bottles. They're going to be building terrariums with them um, and then conducting an experiment with them. So um, we're still looking for pop bottles. If you happen to have uh, any, or if you have your you know, friends who have some, we'd love to get them. I'd be more than happy to come over and collect them. Um, I'm going to be start making some rounds tomorrow around Verona and picking up some pop bottles, but um, I know we always need more. So if you have any, if you know anybody who have some, um, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to come and, and get them so we can use them starting in the 30th. So we've got nine days uh, before we'll write this next week, Thursday, just to let everybody know on that one. Um, kind of the other thing that's coming up too uh, next weekend is homecoming. Um, I don't know if uh, you guys have any questions about homecoming, like what's going on, what uh, like about the dance, the game, anything like that. Um, I'm more than happy to kind of help. It's one of the things that I was, I tell my freshman daughter, um, you know, this is one of your, uh, as a freshman, you really only get homecoming as kind of like the social uh, engagements of the year, social opportunities. So um and then the other one is prom, but you can't go to prom unless if you're a junior or you get invited by a junior. Um, this year will be seniors as well because the seniors didn't get a junior prom last year. So it's a junior senior prom this year, but technically we kind of always go with a junior prom. So the homecoming is really kind of the, the big opportunity for freshmen to be able to go and, and have um, a social opportunity uh, with the school. Um, as of now, I'm not quite sure if it's gonna be in school if it's inside or outside yet, I, I don't know if that the final decision has been made yet. Um, so just kind of letting you know about that. There's the, again, the game is Friday night, the first uh, at seven o'clock. And I think we play Middleton for that one. And then the dance is Saturday night, 7.30 to 10.30. They do need to buy tickets and you can buy tickets at the door for that. Um, I think it's one of those things where once they come, once they leave, they cannot enter back in again. So once you're there, you're there for the whole time until you want to leave. Um, there's a DJ going to be there. It's generally pretty much a good time. Um, I know my daughter's excited about going to it. Um, so uh, we're out in the process of trying to find a dress now. So all exciting things uh, that now I get to be a parent on and figure out what to do. So. Uh, I used to go to homecoming. I, I went to homecoming and prom when I first started teaching. I haven't been to homecoming in a really long time. So, uh, but I don't know how much it's changed. So I think it's kind of, it's, it's the less formal one. Guys generally show up in ties um, uh, and the girls tend to wear uh, kind of almost anything actually it kind of works. Uh, dresses, uh, tennis shoes are always kind of preferred, like kind of just making sure they're comfortable, having comfortable shoes and probably more than likely they might even take them off as the dance in the evening goes on. So um, if you have any questions about homecoming, let me know. You can buy tickets at the school office. I believe they are $10, I think. Don't quote me on that one, but I think that's what it is. Um, so there we go. The big thing then that we're um, just kind of talking about tonight is uh, kind of where we're at with our nature science unit as we are, and we've got our first assessment in um, and kind of talking about um, kind of like study skills, right? How do we, what do we need to be doing as a student to be successful in class um, with the retakes? How do we do those things? And then subsequently also to looking forward 
to the end of the, the nature of science end of the unit summative test, which will be next week on Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday is the end of the unit test. I believe first and fifth hour is on Tuesday, the 28th, yep, 28th. And then two hours, two, four, and six will be on Wednesday, the 29th. And then we'll be starting our ecology unit on Thursday, the 30th, which is why we need the pop bottles for that day. Um, so, you know, it, one of the things I told the students, you know, when they took the quiz, uh, it was their first time, uh, one, taking an assessment like this. Um, just so you guys are aware too, that the, uh, the assessments that we give, that when I talk about we again, as we're talking about all the biology students, is that all the biology teachers were writing it. So um, we sat down together collectively as a group and, and we're writing questions for the quiz and we'll be doing the same thing for the test. Um, and so you're, you're seeing that it's a variety. It's, it's actually five different teachers who are adding questions into it. And for the students and kind of for everybody, um, when you take assessment for the first time in a class, you're starting to see how the teacher asks questions. And so there's a lot of that, that first time is kind of the difficult one, right? Because you don't know what to expect. There's a little bit of nervousness going into it. Um, and so seeing kind of questions for the first time, you know, one of the things I'm trying to reiterate to the students is making sure they read the question and they're reading all of the answers. Um, you know, again, just kind of some good test taking strategies is reading the questions, reading the contextual clues inside of the questions, and then reading all of the answers and picking which answer is the best from all of the choices. Um, I, you know, sometimes I, I feel like I shouldn't have to be saying those things, but I know sometimes I, I do. Um, and that test taking is, is a skill and there are strategies involved in that process. And so how do we do those things um, effectively um, so that students can be um, optimizing their best of their abilities? Um, and it's also too, it's, it's a new challenge uh, for them to getting used to with retaking quizzes and things like that. I, I had a couple of students who were retaking right away, even after I kind of, kind of said to them, really, this is probably not the best idea. Um, and I might actually change the default setting for our, our next one where they can only take one and then wait a couple of days so they can then take the others. Um, I, there is a lot of studying that really should be taking place, which is why I sent out those eight review guides for everybody. Um, I'm hoping that that kind of helped um, to just continually keep looking at this idea of independent variable, dependent variable. How do we create a hypothesis? Identifying the independent dependent variables inside of a hypothesis. Um, and subsequently, how do we set up an experiment kind of looking at those aspects of it? So I'm hoping that the practice kind of really helped in that process. Uh, I looked at the scores on uh, Monday for the students had been retaking things. It looks like scores had been going up and improving. Um, I don't, I haven't looked today, obviously, because I wasn't around today with that. So I'll be looking probably tonight just to see where they're at. They do have until Monday evening. So uh, next week, Monday, to finish the retakes. Um, and that will be one of the things that we want them to retake the quiz before the unit test. So they'll have until Monday night to finish the retakes. Um, again, you know, the more um, opportunity they get to study, ask questions. I know Ms. Bowman ran an A plus today that I requested for students to come into who needed to get some help. And uh, I know Ms. Bowman was going through that with them today, and I'll be continuing to answer questions in class uh, tomorrow and Thursday, Friday for them as we start our review process for the end of the unit test on Friday. So um, really kind of using the class time to understand um, what they can do better and differently. So that kind of leads into this idea of study skills. Um, there's a quote that I give my students a lot um, and I think it's important for parents to hear. So the four of you who are hearing it tonight, um, and I'll be reiterating this later on as, uh, as we go through the course of the year and things like that. But kind of the quote I, I always like to tell students is that um, you've got to be willing to make a change in what you're doing to get a change in the outcome. And if you're not willing to make a change in what you're doing, don't expect a change in the outcome. So, um, you know, we just had the first quiz. What were the study skills leading into that process? Um, 
you know, uh, and I understand too, and this is where we're, we're, it's, uh, we're in an interesting point, right? Because we, we're, we're, we're still in a pandemic. Um, we're coming back to school for the first time for some of our students in a year and a half. Um, first time I'm teaching class again with 30 kids in it in a year and a half. Um, students have been able to schedule classes with their friends, which has actually had a huge impact um, kind of right away at the beginning of the school year as I've been kind of telling my colleagues and stuff is that we seem to have lost this honeymoon period where you get like the first month of school where things kind of go pretty smoothly, right? And then from there, the honeymoon period wears off and things begin to like, you know, the cell phone use increases, the, the amount of talking increases, like the bathroom passes increases and stuff like that. And that's kind of started actually like the third day of school. So we, we've lost this honeymoon period. And in that process, um, it, it's, it's definitely changed the dynamic of our school year where we've got classes with friends inside of them um, and specifically um, scheduled classes with friends and not only friends like best friends um, because that definitely changes the dynamic of things. And so how do we then utilize our study time and what do we do in class? So like being not on our cell phone which um, is still a, a, a problem. Um, and so that'd be something that I would re, you know, ask to remind your son or daughter is, you know, are you on your phone? I mean, if you are on your phone, are you on it when you're allowed to be on it? And one of the things that I always tell the students is that it, I will always give them time at the end of the class where they, when they're working, if they wanna be on their phone and need a little break, that's fine, be on their phone. Like I, I, I get it and understand it, but, um, you know, when I'm talking and I'm giving, especially the lecture information that, you know, not being on their phone, um, so able to listen uh, and, and ask questions and, and process and comprehend some of those things. And, and it's amazing the number of times I'm having to give reminders about not being on cell phones. Um, and then also too, then utilizing that class time wisely. So I, I do see that students are interacting and engaging with each other when doing work time, but also making sure that they are working. Um, and that kind of becomes, again, this idea of what, you know, that's my job as the teacher is to continually redirect, keep focusing, asking questions, um, coming around and seeing how students are doing and if they need help and things like that. And, and I'm getting around to um, uh, pretty much all my classes and students, but when I've got bigger classes of 29 and 30 kids in there, you can obviously see them. The number of times I can get around to each individual student then decreases because the number of kids are increasing. Um, so how do we then utilize then their own study skills? I think is an important thing. It's, this is a learning process. It's, it's an evolution of things. And um, the, one of the big things that I found when we gave the quiz last week is uh, I did ask the students how many of them studied. And out of my 110 students that I have, I think there was probably only less than 10 students who raised their hands who said that they studied. Um, and they had known about the quiz for a week. So it's not like the quiz snuck up on them. It's not like it was a surprise quiz. Um, so like they didn't know what to study. It was just the fact that they didn't. Now, I don't know if that was, um, if that is a, uh, a, a, a direct, re um, direct reality of being able to retake quizzes. Um, and they're kind of like going, well, why do I need to study when I can retake it? So that's one way of looking at things. I guess I would hope um, that they're putting the time and the energy and the effort in before that they're learning the materials so that they're going to be successful first and foremost versus trying to learn things continually after the fact, especially then as we continue to progress through the unit and we're learning new material at the same time of them trying to review the old material. So, um, and I use that quote again, right, of um, if you're not willing to make changes to what you're going to do, don't expect a change in the results. And so, um, and that's a really important thing. This idea of school um, still is a, is a kind of a foreign, interesting concept of being back in class again. Um, I see some students who are doing great with it. I still see students who are struggling with it. Um, and so how do we then, uh, how do I make sure that I'm getting to everybody to make sure that they're feeling comfortable with what's going on is, is part of my process in charge in that. But um, 
really trying to get to this heart of uh, what do students need to do to be successful. Um, I, I always kind of think about freshman year, and I've been doing this now for a long time, that I, I always think of first semester is that I, I have to break down the bad habits, and then second semester we start building back up the good habits. And part of that process is trial and error. Part of that process is failure. And a failure is, again, is, is an okay thing as long as we're willing to do two different things from it, long as we're, one, willing to learn from it, and two, we're willing to get up and try again from it. And um, if we're not willing to learn from those things, then failure just keeps repeating itself. Um, and it's one of the things that, you know, I'm a very firm believer in, in a lot of these things. It's one of the things I, I coach in my golfers is that, uh, and, I, and I tell my kids this too, my own, my own kids, is that, you know, I don't care if you make mistakes, just don't make the same mistake twice. Because if you're making the same mistake twice, you're not learning from your first mistake, that you're just repeating things. And therefore, you're, we're not actually learning and growing. And it's okay to make mistakes. That's part of this process. It's okay to fail. But what can we do to then um, learn from those mistakes so that the next time we do it, we're better at it? And that's one of the things that I'm really trying to make sure that I'm sending that message to the students and that I would love to hear that same message being reiterated at home is the fact that we know that they can do it or they might not be able to do it yet. It just doesn't mean that they can't do it. It just means that where they're at at this point in time is not that quite there yet, but then what are they gonna to do to help move that process along and go forward with it? And if they're not willing to do those things to move forward and, and make progress with it, then don't expect them the results to be any different. And um, you know, I'm a firm believer in the fact that, that I know every student in my class can get an A in my class. I, 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 I know deep down in my heart that um, when students work hard, they put forth the effort, they become motivated to want to do well, that they can. And um, I guess it was just uh, uh, kind of that wake up that reality again of maybe for that first quiz, I was just hoping that we were going to be excited about getting out of the blocks and, and going on a, a great part and, and getting, you know, getting off to a great start with things. And it wasn't that case. Now, it wasn't, doesn't mean that wasn't the case for everybody. It just means like, uh, I guess I was kind of a little bit underwhelmed by where we were at for our first quiz of school. And maybe that I needed to kind of, again, do this check of where are we at? Because again, we're, we're in a pandemic and we're back at school and COVID is out, right? I mean, I'm, I know I've gotten two letters from both of my kids that they've been in a class with COVID. So, uh, you know, I know as a teacher, I've been in a class with students who have COVID. So, uh, you know, I understand that there's a lot of things going on and that, that's one of the things I'm trying to be mindful of is how do we um, not only deal with the academic part, but we also deal with our social emotional part with things and making students feel comfortable, welcomed um, and wanting to be there and wanting to learn. Um, and like I said, that might just take some more time um, as we go through this process, but that's kind of my charge of things then. Um, which then leads us into then, um, so again, like I said, the end of the unit, um, nature of science test will be the next week, Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday will be hours again, one and five. Wednesday will be hours two, four and six. And then next week on Thursday, we're starting ecology. That also means then students can retake the nature of science test. So the same things, they can take the retest, uh, retake the test four more times or three more times after the first one. Um, I am going to set it up specifically so that they can only take one and they can't take multiple retakes on that first day that um, I will make it mandatory that they have to wait. I'll probably open it back up on Sunday. So they have to then, or excuse me, the test will be on Tuesday, Wednesday. So it'll probably be Friday by the time I kind of open that back up because I want students to restudy. It's not just you know, retake it. I think a lot of students thought like, oh, like I know what I got wrong now because I looked at the question and I see the, my answer that was wrong and I know the right answer. So I was going to retake it. And even though I told them you're going to get different questions, I don't think they believed me. And then they retook it again and they got different questions. And because they still didn't know what they were doing, still got bad grades. So, right. That's one of the things that we want to make sure that we're doing is, is um, again, kind of re-emphasizing that process for, for the students as well. And that's one of the things that I'll be doing then um, the rest of this week in our review process on Friday and Monday then, getting the students ready for the test. And what does that mean then um, with not only getting them reviewed for the information, but how do we then take this test? 
um, and just kind of re relaying that information and back at home. Um, and then the last thing is that we're going to be starting then our ecology unit, which again, we need the pop bottles for so we can build our experiments at home. But then um, also too, we're going to be throwing in the um, uh, assessment option of doing a project. Um, I'm a firm believer in projects. I love projects. I actually love them way more than a test. Um, I generally don't give a lot of tests because I, I philosophically don't believe in them. But we as a department, um, our biology team, it's kind of where we're at with things. And, and I kind of make some sacrifices along the way with that one. But I will also be pushing then projects. So I will be sharing with you as parents then what the project option, um, there's like a project creator template for lack of a better term that I've not then patented because I probably should. Um, and then I'm also going to give you the rubric for it as well, so that you can see then how students can make projects and subsequently also to how they're going to be graded on those projects. So students will have to identify at the beginning of the ecology unit. I know we're going to start it on Thursday. It'll probably, I'll probably give them until Wednesday of the next week as far as um, what assessment they're going to do for the ecology unit. Are they going to do a test or are they going to do a project? And I'm going to hold the students to that. Um, so it's not like they can say, well, I'm going to do a project and then halfway through it go, you know, oh, no, I want to do a test now because I'm behind in my project and I really don't want to work that hard now. So therefore, I'm just going to do the test. Or likewise, too, you know, they maybe take the test the first time and they don't do very well on it. And well, now I want to do a project because that might be easier for me to get a better grade on it and things like that. So really trying to um, hold students accountable to that, but then also help students as well. So um, the reason why I like projects is because I, um, I think it's easier to um, take any uh, students. So if we take two students, right, and we, there's, a, there's student A and student B, right, with a, with, a, with a test, we generally write the test somewhere in the middle, right? For this student, the test is too hard. And for this student, the test is too easy, right? But with a project, I can then challenge each of these students and raise them up accordingly, right? I'm not asking this student to come to here, which is a huge leap, right? I can then also take this student and challenge them accordingly as well. So I can move students along a progression of their uh, ability, creativity, their um, ability to demonstrate their, their mastery of learning and challenge them appropriately, which is one of the reasons why I really like projects is because it can become way more personal for each individual student. And then to be able to challenge a student personally to grow. And then I kind of call this like a little project inflation is that because when a student turns in a project and then um, I give them the feedback of what they need to do differently, right? Their project scores go up and their, their overall quality goes up. Well, then this becomes the new baseline then. And then when they come to the next unit and they choose to do another project, this becomes now the standard of what they should be doing, which then means I can then challenge them even further Right, which means then the new baseline continues to grow for what's acceptable and their overall quality. And so that's one of the reasons why I really like projects is because um, students directly control it, um, their um, interests, their areas of study, um, what they wanna do and how they wanna do it is completely controlled by them. And then they just turn something into me and then I give them the feedback on it and they can go back and change it just like the test, right? They can go back and demonstrate more learning, higher quality and raise their scores up. So it's still the same process as we would do with a test. It just becomes way more personalized and I'm hoping then way more um, interesting and motivating for students to do. Um, now you might be thinking to yourself, well, Mr. Austin, this sounds really cool and everything like that, but what does a project look like? Now, that's the great thing about this is that projects can kind of become anything. And you might go, anything? Mm, sounds interesting. Yes, anything. I've never actually turned down a student for what they want to do as a project. Because I want students to say, this is what my area of interest is, and this is how I want to show you what I have done. And I would never want to say no to that student to say, no, I'm not really interested in that, or no, I don't think you can do that, nor do I think it's acceptable, right? Um, one of the things I absolutely love is just sitting down and talking to a student. Like, that's their project is they're not making anything. We just literally sit down and talk and they can tell me what they've learned. I can ask them questions to see their depth of understanding. They can answer my questions. I can ask more questions and we can have this conversation in about 20 minutes of time. 
and I can really gauge how they're doing, right? What have they learned? And what connections have they made to this curriculum? And therefore, I can give a grade on it because it's like we've just sat and talked. They've not made anything. They've not created anything. They've just told me what they've learned. And so I think that's kind of like a great example. Like I've also had kids who make PowerPoints and movies. I've had kids make uh, dioramas, uh, flip, fold, flip fold boards, uh, po uh, PowerPoints. I've had kid make uh, a cookie, a cake, poetry, uh, writing a rap a song, um, a children's book, a board game, making a collage, right? So you can kind of hear all these different things that kids have done over the years that taps into their interests and their passions for what they want to do. It allows for their creativity and their freedom. And so um, every unit moving forward, then we're going to be doing where we're going to have a project option with the kids. And so I'm really trying to stress and highlight, like when we think about um, how do students learn best that I understand that the test for some students is, is a great option, right? Which is why we're going to give that option because for some students, they feel very comfortable taking a test. I also know that some students don't feel comfortable taking a test. And so subsequently, what can we show? How can they show things in a more comfortable manner that gets them excited about learning? So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, so far, we're good, I am, I'm getting this part, like this kind of sounds kind of cool. Maybe you're not thinking that, maybe I'm just thinking that, but anyways, um, that's what's also then the work time then is in class time, then when I'm giving class time for them to be working, the kids who are doing the project, that's their time to work in a project then, right? It's also time for me to check in, where are you at, what's going on, how can I help, what direction are you taking? And I kind of think, try to think of it as, I need to help that student and there's a little speed bump in front of them. And all I have to do is give them a little push just to get over that speed bump so they can keep going again till they get to the next speed bump. And I figure out what's going on and I give them a little push so they can keep going with it. You know, for some students, they don't need help, right? Then that's great, right? I get out of their way. I check in what's going on. Nope, don't need anything. Cool, awesome. You okay? Yep, you're good. Perfect, right? I get out of their way and I let them do their stuff. And so um, trying to build in this idea of accountability, responsibility, being able to take multiple pieces of information and that uh, then get synthesized into one thing. Um, I also, if students want to work on a group project, they can do that as well. And right, we need to kind of um, figure out how that's going to work, but we can do that as well too. So how do you then work together as a team, right? How do you meet deadlines? How do you take a big, large project that you know, has uh, like maybe four weeks, right, of a due date. And how do we break that down into smaller individual parts? Like what are the pieces of information that you need to know and find out on a daily basis then as those puzzle pieces and get put together, it's creating a much bigger overall project. Those are some of the things that I will be teaching them in the course of setting this stuff up and hoping that kids will be excited about it. And then that becomes my little check-in with them is like, what did you do today, right? What was the piece that you added to the puzzle today that then makes your project better or bigger? Um, and, you know, for some time too, that might not be, you know, like one of the things I'm trying to teach students too is, is time management, project management, um, how to use their time wisely, right? What's the difference between, um, you know, work time and, and free time, personal time, things like that. Um, and, you know, I don't want to dictate or control what that looks like. I want to help to teach what that looks like, um, which is why I don't take cell phones away. Um, I ask students to take, to put their cell phone down, but I also know too that, like when I say you have a half hour of work time, half hour might be a lot of time for students to actually focus. Um, and I know that some students can, I know some students can't. So I say to all the kids, like, work for 15 minutes. Like, work hard for 15 minutes and take a five-minute break. Like, that's awesome. Be on your phone for five minutes. You know, I do pay attention when kids get on their phones. If they're on their phones for more than five minutes, I go over, hey, wrap it up. Let's go, you know, and, and get them back on track then. Um, you know, how often I have to do the, like, let's go, you know, kind of is hopefully short uh, and things like that. But you know, how do we teach them skills that will they'll be successful with um, as young adults going off to college? And then also to, as I kind of also like to think of it as, as adults in society, but I think the skills that they can learn in this process are life skills that they can take with them anywhere. 
and use in any type of career or profession, um, post high school, whether it be education, job, military, whatever it might be, right? These are skills that I think will always become important for them. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I like doing the projects is because it does teach them a lot more about themselves than just, can you memorize information and regurgitate it back on a test and things like that. So, um, so really kind of where I'm at and kind of wrapping some things up here with you guys is just um, this idea of study skills. And I think that's one that will continue to keep growing um, as um, I'm trying to continue to reiterate then what are the, the positive good study skills that I'm seeing and how do we then try to minimize the things that I think aren't working again, kind of that, that breaking down process to the point where we can then feel good about letting them go um, and, and watching them be successful. And um, it is something that does take place, it, it, but it does take time. And that's something that is a difficult process for parents sometimes to watch is, um, I, as I know, um, as, as a parent myself right now, right, and as kind of in your same boat too, is to uh, watch your student struggle um, and how to help them to not struggle. And I, I, that's kind of all of our jobs, right? Um, and part of that process of learning though is, is struggling. And like I said too, it's, it's okay to struggle and it's okay to fail, but it's what are we gonna learn and, and, and can we not do it again, right? All those different things. And so, um, you know, understanding that process of, of learning, and that's this whole thing of what I'm trying to do this year with students is to really kind of hammer home this idea that learning is a continuum and that we're just here at this point in time and we're gonna to continue to keep moving through the course of not only our unit, but this year as well. So uh, I know I just talked with you for like a half hour straight. And uh, if Ms. Bowman was here, she could tell me to stop talking because it's one of the things I tend to do a lot. So uh, what questions do you have tonight about what I've just shared with you um, concerning any of these topics? Okay, well, that's, that was known as the teacher wait time. I, I tried to actually count to 10 there to give you guys time to formulate your questions. Um, you're just like the students, right? You, you tend to not have the questions that that either means A, I've done an amazing job again, or you just really don't have any questions, which is fine too. Um, so um, yeah, so I guess kind of the, the review things, end of the unit or the, excuse me, the nature science quiz retakes by Monday. Um, so they've got the weekend to study, right? Retake them. Um, if for some reason they've used their four and you still feel like there's another option that needs to be done, let me know, email me. Um, we can talk about that. Um, I'm not opposed to it, but I'm just kind of letting you know too that, you know, we, we can talk about that. And if they need another option, I'd be more than happy to give them another opportunity for that one. Um, and then the pop bottles that we need by the September 30th and homecoming coming up. And then really kind of this idea of study skills as we're kind of finishing up our nature of science with the test coming up and then obviously then ecology moving forward with the rest of the year. Um, I am excited, ecology is a great unit for us to kind of get started with. It's a little bit easier um, of our concepts to kind of uh, ease into more of our biological science parts of things. Um, but then after that, we, we kind of really jump into things. Our cellular energetics unit is a new unit we're gonna be doing this year and, and I'm really excited about it. Um, kind of getting into this idea of cellular respiration, photosynthesis, some different cellular processes. It does get uh, kind of technical at parts. And then after that, we really get into like this DNA, this idea of DNA replication and protein synthesis, which is way technical. Um, so we kind of like ease into the shallow end and then we're just gonna dive in. So uh, it's a great kind of beginning point for us here with our year with ecology. Um, we're gonna hopefully getting the kids outside to the nature center and exploring and learning some different things and uh, building our experiments that we're gonna be conducting. The experiments that we're gonna be conducting actually we'll do for about three weeks of collecting data and then writing an actual lab report for that and things like that. So there's a lot of things that we're tying back into the unit that we're currently on right now. Um, they're having to do graphing, we're doing conclusions. So they're gonna be writing a formal lab report on their experiment. Um, and like I said, be collecting data for about three weeks on that. So, um, Wonderful. Is there uh, anything else? I saw Adam, you put some things in the chat there. Uh, maybe you have to have a soda party in your class or everyone brings in a bottle of caffeinated soda and drink. Yeah, that'd be, go that'd be great, Adam. Um, I appreciate that. He wrote in there just to me, he said, maybe we should have a soda party in your class where everyone brings in a bottle of caffeinated soda and drinks it. 
Yeah, that would be awesome, Adam. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, maybe we can move the party to your house. Uh, we could have all 30 kids come over. I'll give them two bottles of pop at your house. Um, so, but I appreciate that. Um, if you guys have any questions, do you have any final questions before I let you go? I do appreciate your uh, changing tonight's time. We will going back to next Tuesday then um, at seven o'clock. Um, so I'll see you again next week then. And if anything comes up during the course of the week, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to help. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good night. Take care. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys. Take care. Yep.